Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sushi Mushi. Today's video is pretty much a continuation of a video I uploaded a couple days ago. That video was meant for absolute beginners and teaching them how to render using Blender. Now in today's video, I'm gonna use that same render and I'll teach you guys how to edit it into an icon. Once again, it's for beginners who don't have much experience and also the greatest part about it is we don't use Photoshop. It'll be 100% free. If you're new to my channel, check out my other videos. I have tons of stuff to teach you guys how to improve your GFX and it's pretty helpful. And I have a Discord server which you could join to get more GFX tips, assistance, etc. Now without further ado, let's get straight into it. So to edit our GFX, we're going to be using a website called Photopea. Just type in photopea.com and here you are. This is pretty much Photoshop but for free. To start off, go to open from computer and then find where you saved your render and just open it up. Here's mine and now I'm going to teach you guys some basic things you should know when it comes to editing. First up, the bottom right side of your screen, let's start here. Now this is to delete a layer, which we can't do quite yet because that's our only layer. Next, this is to create a new layer. This is to create a folder to group things together. This is a mask, which you don't need to worry about quite yet. And these are adjustment layers. These are really helpful and you'll see why later. These are some blending options, which you can also do over here. Once again, those are really helpful too. Now you don't really need to worry about channels or paths at the moment, but over here, your opacity, you should know what that is already, but that just determines how clear it is lowers the opacity or make it higher or whatever fill is similar to opacity except when you lower it your fx will still be there if that makes sense you'll see later now to move your stuff around click v on your keyboard or go over here and you can move your render just like that to select things as a square or a rectangle go to your rectangular selection tool and just select it by dragging on your workspace the lasso tool is helpful when you want to select things so if i want to select this head just drag it and i can move it just like that and let's say I want to delete it. Boom, I can delete it. The magic wand tool can select things that are similar colors. So for example, if I click over here, see anything in that shade will be selected. Crop tool, obviously crops it. Here's your eyedropper tool, which you can select a certain color, just like that. Here's your brush tool, which will be very important later on. You'll be able to draw in your workspace like this, but we're gonna get you guys some really nice brushes later on, so just wait for it. You don't gotta worry about your clone tool, but the eraser tool, obviously very important, it erases stuff. Paint bucket tool and gradient tool, it just fills a certain area with color. Type tool, very important once again, that's how you make your text, which you can barely see at the moment, but trust me, we're gonna do effects later and you'll see how it looks. Pen tool is also important, it's pretty helpful and it'll make your GFX look cooler if you do it correctly. These, they just make different shapes, just like so. And here's your zoom tool. To zoom, you can also just select Z in your keyboard and zoom in or out, just like that. Also over here is your history, so you can scroll up and go back to a certain point, like that. Those are the important but basic tools and you're gonna use them a lot. Anyways, let's get into editing. So first up, we're gonna be making an icon and an icon is not a thumbnail size. We need to change it to a square, so go to image and then you're gonna go to canvas size and make it 1000 times 1000. Make sure it's pixels, and then click OK. There you go, now it's a square, and you're gonna move your render a bit, just like that. I wanna first fix the lighting on the character. Go to your adjustments tab over here, and select color lookup. After that, go to this, LUTs, and select this drop down menu. Then select this drop down menu, and you have tons of different options for color lookups. This can change the lighting, so if I click bourbon, Boom, it has that type of lighting. If I pick fusion, boom, that type of lighting. You can experiment, but don't do something too crazy because you still have to do your editing and you have to make sure it matches with your color scheme. Lots of people's GFX can be weird simply because the render lighting doesn't match with the color scheme going on. All right, so I added a few filters onto the character. I added photo filter, which basically puts a little light hue onto the character. I added a light blue and I put it on soft light and soft light makes it blend in more if i had it on normal it would look very blue but these different options help blend it in like overlay will be the most used one when it comes to using effects so be sure you take a note of that then i used the color lookup i used the close you one i couldn't find one i liked i usually use photoshop and i don't really use photo piece so i'm not used to it on this gfx i'm gonna have a blue slash light purple color scheme going on all right, our next step is to merge these layers together. So select photo filter down to background, control G, control E, and that merges it all together. And then now you're gonna make a new layer and drag it below. And you're gonna click a G on your keyboard and go to your gradient tool. 
like I said, we're gonna have a blue color scheme going on. So select this gradient up here, and then this is gonna pop up, and this controls what color your gradient will be. So select it and pick a color you want. I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna go with a darker shade of blue slash purple up to like a lighter shade. Just like that, and then I'm gonna click OK. And now you wanna add it to your background, so go up to the bottom of your screen and drag it all the way up to the top. And there it is. Also, we're gonna be doing more lighting effects later on. So now we're gonna add a couple of effects onto your character. You're gonna double click on the layer and then move it over to the right. We're gonna start off by adding an inner shadow and then making it overlay mode. We're gonna change the color to white. We're gonna raise the opacity and we're gonna change the angle it's facing. Turn off use global angle and then raise the spread and size. We're gonna make another layer of inner shadow and this time it's gonna be a light purple color. After that, go to color overlay and I made a few mistakes, so ignore the other ones, but make the blend mode overlay and then set the color to like a light purple. Lower the opacity a bit too, you don't want it too bright. I think that's good. Now we're gonna add an outer glow, which will obviously add an outer glow. So I'll go to blend mode and make it overlay. Let's try that. And then make the color white. Increase the spread and increase the size. And put the range all the way up. You can mess with the size and spread as much as you want to. I'm just gonna do it how I want. And last but not least, go to inner glow and add a white little glow in the inside. Make it overlay. Spread, size, increase that, and boom. Then click OK and get out of there. Now I'm gonna change the color a bit of the background, so I clicked Ctrl and U to get the hue slash saturation workspace up here. And I'm gonna lower the saturation, and yeah, I think that's good, just like that. All right, so now we're gonna get some brushes, and these brushes will save your life, just wait. So make a new tab and go to brusheasy.com. And here you are. Now on this website, you can get any brush you want for free. Well, most brushes for free and add it to your GFX. So we're gonna add some splatter brushes. Search up splatter and scroll down and find one you like. I'm gonna get these ones right over here. 20 paint splash PS brushes ABR Vol 7. Free download. And it might have a thing pop up, but click free download again and wait five seconds. After the download is complete, select the WinRAR file and then right click on the folder over here. Select extract to a specified folder and pick a folder. I'm going to do downloads, click OK. After you do that, go to your folders, go to your downloads, find where you left it and drag it on the photo P just like this. Then this should pop up in the screen asking to accept it. Click OK. Boom, brush added. So now we're going to make a new layer and we're going to go to our color tool and let's make it white. So this layer is in between the background and the render. So now anything that we put on this layer will be put like that. So now we're going to scatter the brushes around and make it look cool. You can also erase using these brushes, which is also pretty helpful. But to be honest, I don't even like these brushes. I'm going to get new ones. Okay, I got a couple new brushes. I think they'll be better. But before I do anything, I'm going to resize my character real quick. To resize, select V and then select transform controls. And then here with the corners, you can just increase it like that. Now to add the brushes, I'm just going to scatter them around wherever I want. So I got a white brush and I'm going to just put it where I want to. I'm going to change it now and make a new layer. Put it where I want to. But in this layer, I'm going to make the blending option to soft light. Now I'm going to make a new layer above the background and we're going to make a liquefied background. So to do that, pick a brush and just scatter it around a bit like that. Go to filter and then liquefy. Increase your size and density and then make sure you're selecting this option and move it around how you want to. All right, here's the finished look. It doesn't look amazing, but who cares? Let's click OK. And now I want to go to normal and make it overlay. I'm going to select control and U and I want to change the hue a bit. And I'm going to make the lightness to like that level, not too white, but just like that. I'm going to click control J now and we're going to go back to V, go to transform controls and rotate it. Oops. 
just rotate it this one will be on soft light we're gonna add more effects above the render now so just add whatever you want and make it look cool i'm gonna add some of these cool blob looking overlays because they look cool and if you want it i can put it in the description click the media fire link and you guys can get it and download it i'm gonna get the lasso tool to select around it and then click Control layer view copy Control c Control v Control u and then we're gonna change the hue to match with the background i think that matches pretty good and again i'm gonna get a different kind of gonna select this one layer view copy Control c Control v and i'll do the same hue effect as the other one and i'm also gonna rotate them around increase the size a bit Alright, I think we did some decent editing, and if you want to do more, please do, but I'm not gonna. I think it's time to start working on the text. I literally couldn't think of a word, so I used the random word generator, and I got a bagel. So, I'm gonna write down bagel. To add text, go to the left side of your screen, select the type tool, and drag over it like this. And now you're gonna type in the word bagel, or whatever word you're gonna type in. Go ahead and type it in. And now I need to increase the size, so click Control A, and then go to up here to the size area. And then increase the size to, let's make it 250. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Okay, we're going to make it like 235 actually. Now this, this font is pretty lame. So you should go ahead and download the font from thefont.com. So to change the font, go up here to your Deja Vu Sans tab. And scroll down until you find one you like. I found this one. It's basic, but we can make it work. It's the Bao B1 font, by the way. To change the color, we're going to double click on it and we're going to add a gradient. The gradient will have a light purple color scheme just like the background. So select white and then make a light purple color. Click OK, select black and do a darker color purple like that. You can adjust the scaling and the off X, off Y. Now what I like to do is I like to create another layer for the gradient overlay and then make this one to multiply and then lower the opacity just a bit. Now we're going to add a bevel. Bevels make GFX text look so much cooler. Make the screen set to overlay and then the multiply set to overlay as well. Increase the depth and the size and make the softness higher. Lower the depth and just mess around with it until it doesn't look weird. Here's what I have so far. Now I'm going to go to inner glow and increase the size of this as well. And instead of screen, we're going to make this overlay. I added a soft light color overlay as well, just to make it a little more purple. Now we're going to add an outer glow and increase the size, change the color to, hmm, we're, we're going to experiment with this one. You can either do white and set it to overlay, you can do colored edge and make it a different lighter purple color. I think I'm going to do that. And I'm going to add a drop shadow, make the blend mode to overlay, make it black, distance all the way down to zero, increase the size and spread and and boom now click ok and increase the size now i added another photo filter just to contrast it a bit more and add more color and i'm gonna erase it around the face just because it's too much over there here is the final product and you've made your first gfx congratulations um i hope this video helped you guys i hope you guys have a better idea on how to edit and if you guys want more like it let me know make sure you check out my other videos too because i have really helpful ones and yeah Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.